שלא. שלא. We are Matt and Angie. We have been road tripping Italy for four months, pursuing our goal of seeing and experiencing what our native country has to offer. In the last vlogs, you have watched us do everything we could in our ninth region, Piemonte, from hiking around its tallest mountain to climbing a terrifying Via Ferrata. But today, it's time to explore its main city, Turin. And since it's about lunchtime, let's start our tour with a delicious lunch. Our lunch spot is Lorto Giasso Cementario. Let's try it! Mm. We are gonna try the baked zucchini flowers stuffed with smoked tofu cream, leeks, potatoes, millet and turmeric served with a mint tomato coulis. Let's try it. You can definitely taste the turmeric, but it's not too much. It's super well balanced. It's really tasty the inside and a little crunchy the outside. Really, really good. This one instead are nori seaweed rolls, stuffed with Japanese rice, seasonal veggies and sunflower cream, served with soy sauce, wasabi and marinated ginger, and on the side marinate tofu with some crunchy onion. Wow, the taste of the veggie is super dominant and the rice it's very well cooked. I love it. I've just tried this one and I actually hate it. I don't know how you can like it. It's really disgusting. Pastoso. Yeah. The taste is good, but I don't like the texture of the tofu. Nothing special. This one is uh, Satan in Carpione, which is uh, actually cold, so let's try it. Mm. Wow. Taste, it's good. You can taste the lemon and the oil and the taste of the seitan, but the most important flavor is the one of the green sauce. This is instead the moussaka, which is a Greek dish with eggplants and ragu, bechamel with nutmeg on a plate of potatoes and fresh basil pesto. This is unbelievably good. You get the pesto, you got the potatoes, you got the ragu, and like kind of, and kind of fried eggplants, which is the perfect combo. I love it. Here we have the dessert, which is a chocolate cake with uh, inside a slide of jam and on the top a chocolate mousse. The taste is good. The chocolate is very dominant, but I don't like the pastry because uh, in my opinion it's too much dry. I prefer more soft cake, but overall it's good. We spent a total of 65 euros. What's your opinion, Angie? I like it, but I don't love it. Yeah, that's <laughs> perfect, I would say. The price is too high. The food, yeah, is good, it's nice, but nothing special overall it's a nice stop if you're vegan in turin but there are better restaurants in italy, italy yeah. yeah and now let's go see something about the city 
Our first stop is super near to the restaurant and it's La Gran Madre, which is a big church in Torino. Which is actually a gran cagata. <laughs> 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 Apart Angie's jokes about the inside of La Gran Madre, it's time to give you a little background story about Turin, which is such a neuralgic center for the Italian economy, but it's nowadays less known internationally, hidden in the spotlight of Rome and Milan. Turin is a major industrial city, as well as a business and cultural center in the northwest of Italy. And little fun fact not all its tourists know is that Turin was the first capital of Italy. This is Piazza Vittorio Veneto and from here you have a great view to the Gran Madre and to Monte dei Cappuccini. And now we are about to enter Galleria Subalpina. Little fun fact, which is actually not a fun fact, this building called Palazzo Carignano has hidden meanings. The windows' heads resemble the shape of Native Americans' headdresses, and that's because the owner's regiment won the Iroquois League in Canada. And we are now in Piazza San Carlo. On this side, there is Galleria San Federico. We are now in Piazza Castello and behind me you can see Palazzo Madama or a little glimpse of it. On the other side, there is Palazzo Reale. And now we are about to enter in Chiesa di San Lorenzo because there is a secret. Inside this kind of anonymous church, there are hidden paintings. They are located in the many openings, designed to remain in the dark, and which are lit by natural light only twice a year, during the equinox, in spring and in autumn. But to see the frescoes, you can kindly ask a volunteer to lit them for you with artificial lights, and if you are lucky, they may even give you some background stories for free. But it's mandatory while you exit to thank Guarino Guarini for this brilliant piece of art. Behind me there is Santuario della Consolata and in front of it there is the oldest coffee bar in Torino. We are in front of the Duomo di Torino. Inside the Duomo di Torino, you can see the Sacra Sindone, which is supposed to be the veil in which Jesus Christ was covered after his death. It should actually have its face print on it. This Sacra Sindone is uh, not shown to the people all year long. Every 10 years, yeah, what is that? Like something like that. Obviously, right now it's not shown. There are just copies, but you can get a glimpse of that. What I don't like is the post right, yeah. right next to it. No, it's crazy. I never see a post inside the church before. It's crazy. <sighs> oh my God. It's not a place for me, this church. No, me neither. We 
behind me there is the Mole Antonelliana. About it, I have two stories. The first one, in Turin there is a talk about that if you go up to the Mole before the degree, you are not able to get the degree. Second story, that it's not a story but it's like a tips. I suggest you to see the Mole Antonelliana from far away because if you get too close, you don't see anything. Okay! Our tour of Turin ends here. You saw what a nice day in Turin can be eating vegan and wandering around. And actually, it's our last day in Piemonte too. Yes, and little spoiler, our next region will be Valle d'Aosta. Let's go to Valle d'Aosta, but that you'll see in another vlog. Bye bye! bye.